Hi, my name is Leon Jones, and I'm a professional barber in the city of San Antonio in the state of Texas. I talk about barbering, the world of barbering, and some of the things it takes to be a barber, and what it takes to be an even better barber. Being a, being a top-notch barber should be in every barber's mindset. Get a barber's license. You shouldn't be working in a barber shop without a barber's license. It's only $1,500, but it'll be well worth it, especially if you cut out the kitchen. Not only do you have to know how to cut hair, you need to understand the methodology in cutting hair, the steps, the science, as it applies to being a professional barber or a master barber in some state. In Georgia, I'm a master barber. In the state of Texas, I'm just a barber. But in my heart, I'm a master barber. So I can write a book on this stuff. You know, not just cutting hair, who's the best barber, who can cut the best, who can cut the best designs. I mean, that's good too. But I guess you have, uh, I guess what would be known as a triple play. If you can cut great hair, you can do designs, and you can dress immaculate, you got it going on. But uh, those are just a few things. And of course, you want to have the proper tools. Uh, you want to have the, you want to have, you want to have the ability to use proper implementation of these tools as well. Because all your tools do different things. And that's where schooling comes in. You know, it's not like the home kit. You know, you get from Walmart, you open it up, you know, you can read the directions, you can tell you the guard, what guard to put on there, what number, how to do it, you know, have a good CD, little video, you know, but that's only one clipper. And it's, I mean, in the, in the professional barbering field, we have, I wouldn't say hundreds, but we have a lot of different clippers uh, that you need to be aware of and how to use them correctly. Um, Hot towels, razors, how to use hot towels, how to use razors, those are all things you learn uh, when you go to school. Uh, if you're on a journey to be a professional barber, it's not, you know, I'm just here to represent and say that, you know, I'm a professional barber, you know. Uh, and that's the key to my success in this business. Not just trying to get a quick dollar, but treating it as a profession that it is, as the profession that it is. I've, I've worked in shops seven days a week. It's up to you. You know, that's the great thing about being a barber. You call your own hours, your own shots. Um, and you pretty much, based on your professionalism and your skill level, with your cuts, with, with your cuts as far as your cuts are concerned, that's going to determine how successful you are in the barbering world. The way of doing that is making sure that you have excellent uh, barber customer relationship skills. So that's uh, that's something that I've worked on and it's helped me out tremendously. So, you know, I've always considered myself a, uh, a, a person of the people, you know, and, and this is where my organization is. Uh, not only do I cut hair, not only do I recognize and respect what I do and how I contribute to my community. You know, I also want to be able to give back in other ways. So that's why I created this uh, Turkey Drive. This year, uh, the year 2014, God willing, it's going to come off as a success. Uh, my goal is to raise or be able to feed at least 500 families. So, you know, that's my goal. And uh, that's very important to me. It, it'll be held on the east side of San Antonio. Clip the sanitize after each cut. Keep the station sanitized it well, as well. And you have to use the proper tools uh, for the correct cuts. As you can see, the different clippers uh, that I use here, they all do different things. I have outliners, uh, masters, uh, 111 clippers assembly. Um, of course, shears, clip over comb, style type cuts. Um, you know, so barbering requires uh, discipline to be a good barber. Um, and the 
discipline I'm referring to is, is learning and understanding your clients, what they expect every time they come to see you. You need to be able to cut all styles. I cut straight hair, Caucasian, Mexican, whatever. Whoever's hair, I cut hair. But that's part of it. Uh, <laughs> being a great barber is having the ability to cut all different types of styles of haircuts. Let's see, you have the low fade, which is pretty much a low and even all over. That's a dark cut wavelength. Uh, you have a low temp fade, which is even all over. Take a little off, taking a little off the sides and the back, fading it up. You have your flat tops. Uh, those are very popular now. They're starting to make a comeback. Uh, we're going back to the 80s and 90s. All these haircuts are coming back. Uh, the mohawks, or faux hawks, if you will. Because Mr. T had the real mohawk. Nobody wants that mohawk. You gotta be a bruiser to wear that mohawk. This is where I'm at with, with my situation. So, with barbering, the future of barbering is what we make it. You know, barbering is a serious craft, and the people make this craft and makes the world go around. So, it's what you got right here Leon the Barber, Converse, Texas. In the cut barbershop, come see us. We do great work in this barbershop. Ask for Leon. If I'm not here, any barber in here to take care of you. I guarantee you love the service here. So, you know, if not, you have a right to complain. Do what you need to do. But we have a great group of guys here, a great group of barbers. I don't think that's good. You haven't found your good barber, you know where to come.